Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Here are today's top headlines. More management changes at General Motors, another possible recall for Toyota, and Mercedes says good times are just around the corner. Up next, we'll be back with the news behind the headlines. This is AutoLine Daily for Monday, December 7th, 2009, a date which will live in infamy, and now the news. More changes going on at General Motors. With Nick Riley leaving his post in China to go run Opel, GM has appointed Tim Lee in charge of its international operations. Mr. Lee had been vice president of GM's manufacturing and labor relations. Now, Diana Tremblay is appointed to that position. And reporting to her is Denise Johnson, who will be in charge of North American labor relations. Most interestingly, prior to this, Ms. Johnson was a vehicle line director and chief engineer for global small cars. So we really are starting to see changes at GM. Meanwhile, the Wall Street Journal reports that GM has retained the headhunting firm of Stuart Spencer to find a new CEO, one who has extensive global manufacturing and turnaround experience. It says GM could go outside the industry to find a replacement, but Bloomberg speculates that perhaps GM could turn to Nick Riley. He'll have to prove he can turn Opel around, which will not be easy. Last week, 10,000 people in Germany came out to protest against GM keeping Opel. Reuters reports that BAIC has obtained a 20 billion yuan line of credit, that's nearly $3 billion from the Bank of China. The Beijing-based automaker would like to get Saab from General Motors after negotiations with Koenigsegg fell apart last week. For now, BAIC has declined to comment on the situation, but that sure is a big war chest to go out and buy whatever you want. Toyota just can't seem to escape bad news lately. According to Reuters, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration is investigating complaints of stalling engines on the 2006 Corolla and Matrix. Some of the cases alleged that the engine would stall at intersections and others while driving. And there were also complaints that the engine would not restart afterward. The investigation covers nearly 400,000 vehicles with the engine identified as IZZ-FE. Ford plans to issue up to a billion dollars in new stock. According to the Detroit News, the company filed documents with the SEC to issue the new shares and that it would be used for general corporate purposes. But in the past, Ford has issued new stock to try and reduce its debt. Could this be another indicator that we're finally clawing our way out of the worldwide economic recession? Global year-over-year -year sales of Mercedes-Benz cars rose 16% last month to nearly 100,000 units. The gain was helped largely by the redesigned E-Class and S-Class models, which were up double digits. Like the rest of the industry, Mercedes sales were up sharply in China. They were up 81% in Brazil and 19% in the United States. Overall, the company expects fourth quarter sales to grow significantly following its biggest monthly gain in deliveries this year. Coming up next, we'll take a look at BMW's new college, and we'll be back right after this. Automakers use all kinds of avenues to get the word out on their products. From a simple press release to an elaborate event, I thought I'd seen everything until BMW recently created its own college. Located on the Ivy Free campus of its North American headquarters outside of New York City, BMW held what it called a Day One University to bring reporters and analysts the latest news classroom style on industry issues and product updates. One of the main sessions dealt with reducing emissions, not just the facts and figures surrounding it, but also the problems in communicating such a complex issue. I think it's in a sense a challenge for the media because the people who create these stories about the magic bullets, they sound very compelling. And I think there's a great hunger in the public 
for some technological fix to save us from ourselves, and we keep grasping for it. That's John DiCicco, an expert in the field of carbon emissions. He led the discussion based on his 2007 study that focused on the carbon burden that automakers face and spotlighting who's done what. BMW and Mini, it turns out, were a couple of his industry bright spots. And though no one in particular has a silver bullet, he does see potential solutions on today's carbon landscape. Addressing these new market concerns, greater customer concern on, on efficiency, greater regulatory concern on CO2, comes down to a matter of design priority. And you, there are costly solutions. Everyone needs to look at those. Uh, and they, they will have some role to play, like electric vehicles. But there are also creative solutions. And that's where, say, the BMW and Mini Cooper story came in, offering a premium creative small product that did very well as a way to address customer needs, gain share, and reduce CO2 footprint at the same time. We put in a link in today's transcript if you'd like a closer look at John DeChico's original study from his days at Environmental Defense Fund. It's called Automaker's Corporate Carbon Burdens. Tomorrow, also from this same BMW event, we'll take you to a workshop on the Mini E program. Okay, since I wasn't here Friday, we're going to announce the winner of this week's trivia quiz. We asked you to name the make and model of this car. And the correct answer is... It's a 1947 prototype of the original Saab Type 92. And as always, we randomly selected this week's winner from the pool of correct responses, and the winner is Dan David of Chester, Connecticut. Congratulations, Dan. You just won this collector's edition AutoLine Detroit coffee mug. And hey, don't forget to join us this Thursday for AutoLine After Hours when our guest will be Brent Dewar from General Motors. He is the head of Chevrolet Worldwide. And that's it for today's top news in the global automotive industry. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.